fascinating organization. How would you summarize it? What's that elevator pitch? Oh, here we go. Zadie is an online vertically integrated sustainable apparel no I'm kidding but what we do is we make beautiful fashion that is sustainably produced so we detail down to the raw materials every step of our supply chain for men for women in fact Zadie Man just launched yesterday with a pretty good review in GQ um, but the idea behind our business is to really help people understand the core principles of how things are made well now you've I know called yourself the kind of whole foods of fashion and my guess is that you're appealing to that millennial crowd who feel very strongly about that element of where they spend their money um, but that might exclude other members of the public are you happy with that you know we found in the beginning that um, our research showed millennials want to vote with their dollars which is why brands like Tom Shoes, Warby Parker in the past have thrived. But actually, if you look at the data of our customers, it ranges from you know uh, 15 year olds who are buying uh, you know that first entry point, uh, a wallet um, or an accessory on the site, all the way up to um, grannies. And the reason is because that a lot of people in the U.S. want to support products that are made here locally, which a lot of the Zadie collection is. And then you have people who are environmentalists of all ages who support the idea of sustainable supply chain. So just like Whole Foods probably began with a younger subset of customers, uh, we too have expanded our audiences. Now, what advice would you give to an older organization who has been very successful but would love to try to embrace some of this? Because let's be honest, millennials are very smart. They are not going to look at an oil company putting out an environmental message and go, oh, wow, they're environmentally friendly now. How do you get over this challenge? Well, I think you're asking me if you're a sin brand or a sin stock, how do you be less sinful? And I think the era of corporate social responsibility is sort of falling way to an emerging era of benefit corps, B corps. So you really can't pretend like you're doing something um, ethical if the core of your business isn't. Unfortunately, the brands that are um, historically sort of titans of industry in areas, areas like um, cigarettes and, and oil have to kind of embrace what their core business is and think about what makes them a benefit to society at the end of the day. Um, I believe that, and I spoke about this in the presentation, all businesses need to understand their cultural imperative using Andrew Yeoman's line from Stanford and really have to understand their core purpose, the Simon Sinek start with the why. If you're a small startup or a Fortune 500, it doesn't really matter as long as you're embracing this big question at the end of the day. Last question. You mentioned um, Snapchat as a great tool for communication amongst millennials. I use it for basically just my kids, and I, I just still, I, to me, I don't like a message disappearing. I like to look back at stuff. But that aside, Snapchat will be yesterday's news in a couple of years. How will you make sure that you continue to embrace new technologies when they become alien to you? Well, I was over Snapchat a year. No, I'm kidding. Um, I think it's important to always be testing what's coming out next and um, to read about this um, in TechCrunch, in Mashable, the next web. I subscribe to probably 50 newsletters um, and read them mostly on my mobile phone in the morning as I'm getting ready or at the gym. So. To stay abreast of what's next, it really just takes a patience for reading about things and then the willingness to download them if they're mobile applications and just try them out. But then you're relying on whether they become a tipping point. Foursquare, checking in, it's gone. Everyone used to check in, now it's gone. And we all downloaded it and had a go. So you've also got to be smart enough to spot the winners, I guess. Well, that makes me sad because one of my dearest friends is the co-founder of Foursquare. But I will say that it went away from a consumer standpoint. It broke off into two apps and the company reinvented itself as a B2B data platform. I think you're going to see a lot of young companies staying relevant within certain circles. But I hear you, from a consumer perspective, young startups typically have a buzzy shelf life of maybe one to two years. And things will either explode or implode. That's just the nature of web 2.0, 3.0, depending on whom you're speaking to. So what I do is I try to stay authentic to what I actually like. I love the 53 app, Paper by 53. Yeah, it's how I take notes and record photos. Um, it's a beautiful app. It happened to be named App of the Year, but it's not the world's most po popular app yet. I'm not using it because it's buzzy. I'm using it because it has a practical fit in my life. And we will leave it there. Thank you very much. Thank